Don't mind me, I'm pounding the fuck master. Gotta burn off this extra 10 pounds of fat I'm carrying around. <sighs> it's, it's okay, I worked out. Before you get upset, those aren't mine. I don't eat that shit. However, I got triggered today, so I decided to make this video. Um, the big question that most people who are obese answer themselves because of the classic dogma of calories in, calories out, eat less, move more, vastly promoted by the health industry, the diet industry, the government, all for financial purposes to keep you in a hamster wheel of trying to lose weight while constantly making fat to replace it. We need to put an end to that. That's not how your body works. You know, I mean, your body is an energy balance machine. And if you believe in calories in, calories out being the law of the land and there is no middle ground, your body is smarter than you are. And you're going to waste tons of time doing exercise for weight loss purposes that you'll just gain back when you're done. And you will be done. You're not going to exercise at the same level the whole, your entire life. It's impossible. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be all kinds of factors. You won't have time. Maybe you'll have other things that demand time. Maybe your fucking whole work schedule will go nuts. Maybe you'll get a job that's in the middle of nowhere with no gym. Maybe you'll have a spouse that doesn't like that you're never home because you're always in the fucking gym. You know, there's any number of things that are going to stop you from constantly exercising. So let me first explain the cycle that we've been doing for the past 40 to 50 years to treat obesity. You're like, look in the mirror one day and you say, fuck, I'm fat. And then you, you go and you ask your doctor or your, you know, buddy that's thin, that's going to the gym all the time. What do I do to not be fat? And they're like, well, sign up for this gym membership for a year that you can't ever fucking get out of, ever, without paying more money. Oh, and by the way, eat less. Did it work? How's our obesity doing over the past 30 years? 
How are we doing? Why do we keep doing the same shit over and over again to treat this shit? And watching the fucking numbers of obesity, diabetes, heart disease all climbing off the fucking scale while we go to the goddamn gym. Thinking we're being healthier and more fit. Now, before you get pissed at me about the whole gym thing, I do believe there is a role for moderate amounts of exercise in health. You can build muscle, you can build endurance, you can build strength. I do stress that you shouldn't overdo it. You know, but there are people that love that. And for those those are not the people I'm talking to. I'm talking about the to the obese motherfucker who hates going to the gym, who will get out of it anytime they fucking can, that because they're looking in the mirror and they're looking at their fucking prescriptions and their blood pressure and their diabetes and they're going Fuck, I gotta do something. So they force themselves to go to the gym. Those are the people I'm talking to. So if you love the gym and you love being big, buff, muscular, a big, huge motherfucker that is not immune to the other health dise diseases if you are, you know, consuming the wrong types of foods, but be that as it may, eventually you're going to be an overweight version of yourself at the point that you stop the exercise that's the fine print that they never tell you it has been proven in study after study you lose weight for the first six months then you plateau that plateau can last anywhere from a year to two years but then for one reason or another you either stop exercising or you start eating more and that would be a hormonal issue and a met metabolic issue caused by not consuming enough calories for your workout. But yet we're telling people, eat less, move more. And your body's going to be like, ah, oh, motherfucker. No, you may try and move more, but when you're not moving, I'm going to drop your fucking metabolism by 500 calories a day. And I'm going to keep that bitch there, even if you stop moving. And I'm going to keep it there for a year. Biggest loser study, look it up. You've got to get out of this gym for weight loss mentality. The majority of my weight loss, 66 to 68 pounds. I fluctuate a little bit. Very little gym and moderate amount of physical activity, as in I go hiking every once in a while. But the vast majority of my time is spent sitting on my ass working. Whether it's doing this, whether it's editing photos, whether it's driving around an Uber, that's all sedentary jobs. And I still manage to lose the weight. Do I look like a big ripped gym rat? No, I don't want to. I could if I went to the gym and I built all that muscle, but for what? So I look ripped? That's not my goal. Might be yours. That's a good reason to go to the gym. Not a good reason if you're carrying around 100 to 150 pounds of extra fucking weight. In fact, I would contend you're more likely to injure yourself before you reach your goal when you do that. Now, there are people who do that. They lose 160 fucking pounds doing it. But what those people aren't telling you is they have to keep that level of energy expenditure up. Or they regain the weight. You don't get to keep it. No, you don't pound the gym three hours a day, lose all that weight, and keep it off. Because your body's going to be like, fuck you. And it will. It will bounce back. This is how your body works. And if you're eating this kind of shit with sugar, basically a box of sugar with some vitamins added to it, you're fucking going to regain it faster not to mention your liver's fucked so even if you look thin and you're eating this shit you're still gonna get sick you're still gonna increase your insulin resistance and when you get old you're gonna pay for it and i'm not talking 70s 80s old because a lot of people be like well i guess i could deal with that i'm talking 50s and 60s old 40s 30s it's climbing down how quickly we get the illnesses of old age. And it's because we've increased our sugar consumption and tried to stay fit but failed doing the same shit for the past 
40 to 50 years, however long we've been on this workout fucking craze. We work out more than any other fucking country in the world, and we're the fattest fucking country. Do the math there. Everyone I know is jogging or going to the gym or whatever, but yet our obesity rate is a number one on the fucking charts. Why do you think that is? Well, nobody's got fucking willpower. No? Look around the gym. You'll see the guys that live there. They're the big buff motherfuckers. And then you'll see the guys and gals that are in there trying in vain to lose weight the hard way. And they will manage some weight loss. They will plateau. And they will regain the weight. It is very important if you do go to the gym for strength training and endurance and overall general health, the reason to go to the gym, that you eat enough to pay for it. As in, if you go to the gym and burn a thousand calories, you better eat a thousand fucking calories. And you better eat a thousand healthy fucking calories without sugar and without carbs. And the reason you want to do that is so your metabolism stays the same. If you go to the gym for three hours and you burn like a thousand calories, most of which is glycogen, by the way, if you are a carb burner, you're going to tank your metabolism if you do not eat your basal metabolic rate plus those thousand calories. Not doing so will cause short-term weight loss, but it will cause long-term reduction in metabolism. This has been illustrated in study after study. Google that shit. Google the biggest loser study and stuff like that. These are perfectly good studies that illustrate in an extreme what you're essentially doing. Now there's different levels of this. And if you like going to the gym, I'm not taking a shit on that. I'm taking a shit on the fact that we're still forcing motherfuckers to go to the gym who hate the gym to lose weight. They're spending their hard-earned money and their time. They're risking self-injury because they're carrying around a hell of a lot more weight than that skinny-ass fucking personal trainer when they're on that treadmill. Or they're lifting. And I contend they got enough muscle under there because they've been carrying around this fucking weight for years. So if we could just lose the fat in a healthy way, i.e. in the kitchen, they'd see a lot of that muscle. And it's true. Your muscles start to pop out once your body fat pulls away. You might lose a little lean mass depending on how you go about it. But you're going to lose lean mass in the gym if you're not eating enough. So you got to eat enough. Now, the, the takeaway from this video is not never go to the gym or never exercise. That is not the takeaway. Exercise in moderation helps keep your fitness up. Helps keep your heart primed. It help, helps keep your strength up so that you can perform physical activities. And you should really largely base that on the kinds of physical activities you'd like to be able to perform and plus a little bit of emergency, you know, if you have to run from some motherfucker. You know, or if you have to occasionally beat someone's ass, that happens too. Or so you don't get your ass kicked, you know, there's that. But overall, generally, my assessment of my life is I don't need to do that shit. If I gotta run, then there's problems. Because there's nothing I'm doing in my life that requires me to be able to run for fucking four hours. Ever. So, if that's your thing, that's fine. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying quit punishing the obese and the sick by telling them to eat less and move more because all you're doing is delaying the onset of a more serious problem and that's where even when they're eating less and moving more, they stall their weight loss and eventually regain the weight. And then all that time was wasted, all that misery. Now, if you feel good exercising, that's fine. I'm not. I don't, I hate being in the gym. I do. 
I hate being on the fucking fuck master. I hate being over there lifting shit up, putting shit down, lifting shit up, putting shit down. Ooh, flexing my shit in the mirror. Look at that. I got a little bit of a bulge. I'm making progress, even though that's temporary and goes away very quickly. Um, you know, not to mention when you do build that level of muscle, you have to maintain that. If you don't use the muscle, you lose the muscle. That's how the body works. It's called atrophy. If you're a big, swole motherfucker and you don't keep lifting, guess what happens? Your muscles shrink. You lose strength. You lose gains. And that's regardless. And it especially happens if you don't eat enough. Why do you think bodybuilders try to eat the shit out of shit? Because they need more energy to make more muscle. That's how it works. Not only do they have to eat what they burn, they have to eat more so that they have the nutrition and the energy to grow more muscle. It's a way of forcing their body to do so. And it takes years. And it takes dedication and time. Many, of pe you know, many people don't have two to three hours a day to go to the gym. It's just not feasible in some lifestyles. Definitely not in mine. And that's even being self-employed. So, you know, the, you got to understand your body's going to compensate. Another thing that's going to happen that often gets disputed is your appetite increases, especially if you're a fucking sad American diet eater. You know, if you're eating the standard American shit, you're going to be really hungry all the time. However... Not while you're working out. Probably not for a couple hours after if you're standard American diet. If you're keto, you got 12 to 24 hours and then you will be hungrier than normal. It'll be slight. Might not even notice it that much. But when you eat, you won't get full as quickly. You'll be hungrier when you get hungry and you'll be eating a little bit more. And if you're not eating enough, you will run into the same metabolism crisis where you will burn less energy. So, I got triggered. That's why I made this fucking video. I just wanted to pass this along to you. Go to the gym or work out or whatever because you want more endurance, more strength, better heart health, etc. Do not go to the gym to burn fat. That's not the place for it. You go there to build. Tear down and rebuild. You tear down in the gym, you go eat. And build back up the shit you tore down and you build it a little stronger and a little bit more efficient than before. That is what you do in the gym. You're not there to burn that extra 10 pounds of fat. And you won't be able to. You might burn two extra pounds versus someone else who's doing the same eat less part. I contend, eat what you're supposed to eat, intermittent fast, and keep your carbs and sugar down, and the weight will fall off. And the lower it gets, the more gradual it, it will be. But after a couple years, without any significant time investment in maintenance, you can maintain your weight loss and not regain the weight. It is very simple. When you use fasting and keto alone, without going to the gym, you will maintain, you will fix your apostat, your body will take care of your body weight. Your metabolism will even ramp up if you overeat on a ketogenic diet. It will burn more. You'll be more energized. You'll want to do shit. You'll be more active. That's another part of the hormonal process. When you tank your metabolism, you're not going to feel like doing shit. You're going to need naps. You're going to not want to be active. That's part of the process. In addition to slowing your basal metabolic rate by 500 calories, you won't be motivated to get up off your ass when your metabolism's tank. You'll have to force it, and it fucking becomes laborious. I've been there. I've done it. I know exactly what it's like. My first five pounds after I quit Mountain Dew was eat less, move more. 
and I very quickly discovered it was dumb because the you know I would do weeks where I just fasted because I was a truck driver I couldn't work out all the time and I saw just as much progress maybe a pound slower to me that seemed like a shitty trade-off for the amount of time you have to spend working out so working out as a weight loss tool not an issue, not something that you should do and you know that's my opinion based on research and personal experience with weight loss and weight regain i made a trip into the 190s back when i was in the military and i did so by eating less and moving more and it came back with a vengeance and kept creeping up afterwards the moment i stopped moving more and eating what i thought was intuitively you know a couple meals a day eating the standard american diet but that was my failing and can you do it on a keto you know you will there are people that do stall and gain weight on ketogenic diet because ketogenic diet is not a weight loss diet you lose weight in the beginning because you stopped all the bad shit but what keto does is take away your hunger and get your apostat working properly so that you eat when you're hungry and you don't eat when you're not. If you sit on your ass all day, you're not going to be as hungry as if you went to the gym. Once again, 12 to 24 hours for that to kick in. It's not instant. You're not going to instantly be hungry that an hour after you go to the gym. It could even be the next day. I've seen it. I've done it. I've had days where I was highly physical active and then the next day I ate ravenously and I just couldn't get full no matter how much I fucking ate and it was ketogenic. So if you're finding yourself plateauing, if you're finding yourself, you know, regaining weight on a ketogenic diet, I'd look to, are you eating enough to compensate for your physical activity? And you should be. And don't be afraid to regain a little weight. Some of that might even be muscle. All kinds. And shit. So, that's my spiel on this. I know I'm going to get some dislikes on this one, but it needs to be said, and it needs to be repeated out loud. Um, this is not, you know, rocket science. This is... The, the data is clear on this. Look at our data. We've exercised more, and we've gotten fatter and sicker in the process. It is a recipe to enrich the gym industry, the health industry, the diet industry, the food industry. All of them are promoting eat less, move more. Coca-Cola has got a fucking campaign sponsorships and scientific studies proven that eat less, move more should work, although they fail completely. Why do you think a company would sponsor something like that? Why do you think Coca-Cola or Pepsi or any of these other food companies that would profit from you eating, you know, more would tell you to eat less and move more? Because they know when you move more, you're going to eat more. Whether you like it or not, you'll try. Willpower works for a while, but eventually you're going to fucking cave. And that's what they're counting on. That's what they're banking on. And the health industry. If you have to keep going to the gym the rest of your life to maintain your weight loss, guess what? They make a lot of money. The food industry. There's making money because they know you're going to be hungrier. The gym industry is going to know that you're going to want to keep your weight off, so you got to keep going because they know a second you stop going, your weight starts creeping weight the fuck back where it was, and then some. And then you got the pharmaceutical and health industries. Hmm. What well, is their stake in it? Well, if you aren't sick, if your weight is down, you don't have diabetes, you don't have heart disease, you don't have all of these illnesses at an early age, you don't need prescriptions. In fact, you might rarely have to go to the doctor. It might be some infectious disease or maybe you get hit by a bus or something, but for the most part, the chronic diseases that are bankrupting our healthcare system, they would go away. But in the meantime pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry would lose billions with a B. So it's not in their best interest. And of course, all of these motherfuckers are lobbying the government. Hence, 
not government's best interest. There is a big financial drive for you to eat less and move more, and it's complete and utter bullshit when it comes to weight loss. It's a big market and a big economy. Snap the fuck out of it. Eat the right foods. Fix your problems with fasting, which is free, and keto, which is also free compared to the amount of food and healthcare expenditures you're going to do. I would contend it's cheap as fuck in the long term to be on a ketogenic diet because you're not going to be in the hospital. You're not going to be on drugs. You're not throwing all that money to the, the healthcare industry that you're saving eating processed foods and $5 fucking fast fucking gulp shit at fucking fast food restaurants filled with sugar to keep you going back and salt to make you thirsty. Fuck that shit. All right? Sometimes you just got to say fuck that shit. And that's what I've done. Fuck that shit. So, that's my spiel. Sorry I got triggered. It happens every once in a while. It's probably good that I turn on the camera when it happens. But remember, even though I said all of this with massive amounts of authority, because I'm passionate about it, I'm not a fucking expert. All of this knowledge is out there. Do your research. Google this shit. Google the studies. And watch the little graph that drops for the first six months and then starts climbing until they're all their weights back over a 10-year um, course or period. The Women's Health Initiative, five to 6,000, 7,000 participants in that. That study illustrates this. Over a huge amount of people. Biggest Loser study shows you the extremes. You know, go out there and Google this shit. I can't spoon feed all of it to you because you're not going to fucking believe me. You're not. One guy with a beard isn't going to convince you that 40 years of dogma is wrong. You have to convince yourself. You have to get out there and find this shit yourself. It's the only way. It's the only way to fix your health. Otherwise, you're going to keep doing the same shit we've been doing with the same results we've been getting. And maybe you're the lucky unicorn that'll make it to the end. You know, and maybe you kept the weight off because you pounded the fuck master for 40 years while eating a thousand calories a day your whole life. And maybe that'll work. Sounds pretty fucking miserable and hungry way to live. I like being full. I'm full most of the time, even when I'm fasting. Because I'm efficiently switching over to body fat. Not something you're doing as a carb burner in the gym. And, you know, ask anybody who's bonked, by the way, about that whole energy crisis that happens when you're not fat adapted and you're in the gym. It's okay to carry around some body fat. But we need to get the visceral fat gone. We need to be healthy. Instead of worrying about whether or not we're going to get our dick sucked. Besides, I'd argue getting your dick sucked has a lot to do with your personality and not as much to do with your looks. Just my opinion there. We can debate that another time. Have a nice motherfucking day. And shit. Oh, before you go, there's like a little fucking subscribe button. You should click that shit. Help grow the channel. Especially if you liked this. If you disliked this, then bye. But if you liked it, right now you're the like shit, there's the fucking subscribe. You should do both, really. You know, because that helps more people get the message. You know, and it helps me to be able to make more content and grow the channel. And keep doing videos that at the very least will at least trigger you if you don't like what I'm saying. It's entertaining to be triggered sometimes, I guess. Not my type of tea, but I know there are people that like being triggered and watch videos just so they can get triggered and argue and shit. So, like and subscribe. And I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. It continues to grow. We're getting, you know, a little bit at a time and we're getting towards the goal. The goal obviously being full time and then eventually moving on to employing motherfuckers and then maybe making some bigger product productions and we'll get there.
we'll get there. So that's the goal. Sorry, my fingers got confused. Have a nice motherfucking day. Again. And shit. And by the way, no Rice Krispies were consumed by me for years now. I borrowed that just to make this video. So if you made it all the way through... That's the Easter egg, is I don't eat fucking Rice Krispies anymore. I haven't eaten that shit since, fuck, long time. Have a nice motherfucking day, again. The, for real this time. You can turn the shit off. You know, there's some credits, but you might want to watch those. But have a nice day.